right, so I'm gonna get into this. So uh, anybody that knows knows me, they know I'm in management. All right, so um, I work for I work for a Fortune 500 company. Okay, and I don't know if that means anything to y'all. If that's a big flex or not, I'm I could say the name where I work, but you know, to me, it's just that. But when you say Fortune 500 company, it sounds so like uh, suave. It sounds very real sophisticated. So I'm gonna say that again. <clears throat> So I'm a salary member of management at a Fortune 500 company. Yeah, it didn't really sound that good. Anyway, sound like an asshole, really. But um, yeah, so I work at a, a Fortune 500 company, and I'm a salary member of management there. And I've been doing that position for um a little over a year, uh, almost like 18 months now. So about a year and a half. Um, I think I've done an okay job for the most part. And uh, somebody who I guess you could say he kind of looks up to me. Um, or just admires, you know, how I handle things, whether it's, you know, pressure or whatever, just problems that day to day. And they wanted me to uh, help them on a project because they had a project about they're going to school for business. Excuse me, business management. And so he wanted me to help on this project. So I said, yeah, sure, of course. So he sent me some questions and I want to, um, you know, I guess I want to just answer them real quick. So it says, briefly describe your current position and responsibilities. So. It's a lot of responsibilities, right? Um, but like I said, I'm a assistant store manager, so even though I have a I have a uh, a area of penetration that I need to focus on, technically speaking, uh, from one side to the other side, front to back of the building, behind the building, parking lot in the building, all that is is my um, responsibility, uh, technically speaking, right? So um, I run all the day to day operations. Um, uh, make sure everything running smooth, make sure the store is clean and safe, make sure all the customers are being taken care of, make sure all the associates and and anything and anybody is being uh productive. I make sure I to uh de-escalate situations, handle all any any big issues. I I do a lot. You know, you gotta cover handle payroll, you gotta handle expenses, you gotta run the business, you gotta run the plays, uh, you know, you setting you setting up pause throughout the day you are watching uh customer interaction to see what's what's selling what's not selling uh and then you're working but you're doing all that through people so i'm not just it's not like i'm physically wanting getting this wanting getting that wanting getting that but part of my, my 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 position my job is to uh see who's available to do these things right and then get them to do it but also have to be very uh detailed and what i want them to do so that they do right the first time because if not then i gotta be a different person so they can do it right the second time if it's not done that way then i gotta be a different person again so we can figure out why, why you didn't do it right the second time because at that point i'm gonna get somebody else to do it but i'm gonna figure out why you didn't do it right the second time so and i have to be so mind you like me even me speaking like that is different right so that's briefly uh what i do um it says what do your subordinates expect from you on a job so I told him, I said, support leadership, training and honest feedback, support your decisions, and lead by example. Also, guidance if needed. Um, so for me, in my position, I have uh, two, at least in my in my concentrated area, I have a department supervisor for each for each department that's, that I'm over. So what they expect from me is I would I, I work through them. So anything need to be done, I kind of tell them the plays. I might know ahead ahead of time. I might know in advance. So we have to set up, prepare. If we see, I'll just give you an example. If we see uh, a bunch of a patio furniture come in, I have to say, hey, look, a play is going to be set up in three weeks from now to put that patio furniture here. So let's put it here for now to see if we can sell it. And then we'll gradually move it over there, whatever the case may be. I'm saying we, but it's not necessarily my job to do so. All right? I tell them. They can either do it themselves if they want to, or they can get people that's under them, their subordinates, to do so. Um, so that's one way. Um, training. You always want to train somebody up. You want somebody to take your spot if, for some reason, uh, you choose to step up, if you uh, go into somewhere different, another, another another area of the store, or if just to train them up so they can also, you know, make more money and get promoted and things of that nature. So in doing so or that, you have to make sure that, you can't just keep all knowledge to yourself. So you have to, if I know some things, I have to take that extra five, 10 minutes. Hey, yo, come walk with me real quick. We're walking around the building. I'm showing them things. I'm showing them this. I'm showing them why I would do that differently. I was showing them maybe something they did. I think y'all did that, but it could have been tighter or you should have priced that or, you know, you should have put that there to 
have an attachment to go with that. You got this soil, you should have put these patio blockers and then some some plants here so you can sell all the group just to generate more revenue. Certain, certain things like that. Um, if it's a, a associate problem, like, why don't you come with me real quick? I got to talk to the associate. I want you to be there. I want you to see how I'm talking to the associate, how I'm, how calm I'm being, when to, when to to not be calm, when to lean in, you know, you know, when to fall back. Just the teaching and training aspect of things. Uh, you want to make sure that you're training them on that. Give them honest feedback. Hey, yo, um, I know last night you had two associates with you last night, last night closing the department. You know, I feel like you kind of could have went over to another area and gave them some tasks and then followed back up with them. And while you did that, you could have went to the area and, and fixed this area since you was here last night as a member of management. You know, you should probably want to uh, learn all the areas in the store because you may not always be in this area. It's just a certain way you talk to them and talk to the associates. So, Anybody up under me, that's that's kind of what I'm giving you. Um, and also, I, I joke a lot. I joke. I play. I want to make sure you know it's not all just strictly business. You want to uh, have fun. You want to enjoy where you work at. So I'm showing them also fun ways to do the job. So I don't always be do this, do this, do this, do this. Sometimes I'm joking. We laughing. I'm joking with how I'm working hard on you. Sometimes I'm coming physically to help you out. I may do something with you so that you know I can do it. If you know I can do it, then naturally I will hope. Um, you want to learn how to do it. So then once you know how to do it, you can then train somebody else. And now we keep training. That's management anyway. We're training, we're training, we're training, we're training to make our job easier. Once I train my subordinates on how to do things and how to look for certain things and things I'm looking for and things I'm expecting, I set my expectations. Then they can set their expectations. And the relationship I have with my subordinates are key because however our relationship is, I would want it to mirror how their uh relationship is with their subordinates so if me and my two subordinates got a real good relationship and they know what i want i ain't got to tell them what to do i want them to have the same relationship with their subordinates so that we can either help other areas of the store or that we can just run the business run the business more smooth so um i hope that wasn't too long with it i'm sorry if i'm being long with it um it says what are the major stresses <laughs> and challenges you face on the job so i'm not gonna lie to you if you listen to thinking out loud from all last year that was my escape, really, from depression and just everything. Last year, I had, I had a different, I had a storm. I worked in Aiken first of all, so the drive was already crazy. Um, the team wasn't wasn't the greatest. Um, we were a good team, but we had some weak links on the team. Um, people that had been there for a long time that I just felt like I, I couldn't learn nothing from. So that that when I say something about you know the training and, and all that stuff, that's 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 important. That's an important uh, component in being a good manager. That's just being good. Not even being great, just being good. And I didn't get that from them. Uh, I felt like I went there with a lot of, well, not a lot of experience. I had the least experience, but I would feel like I was being called on the most for whatever reason. So a lot of stress there because you normally have, I think the one of the, one of the main stresses I always face is knowing that you have peers that can't, uh, that can't do their job at the same level you do your job at. And then it kind of brings you down sometimes because you start to fall back. Okay, well, I ain't doing all this. Or you're able to do what you need to do and also other areas of the store. And it's like, why well, can't we all do that? That's the stress of the job. Um, I work in retail, so things are steady changing. You got different seasons. So right now, it's about to be busy season. About to go into, what, spring? So about to get crazy out there, you know. And I, I, I always run the garden, so it's going to be crazy. Um, that's a stress level in itself because – it's like I'm in a district too where uh, we want to be number one in everything. So I mentioned earlier about wanting to win, right? That mentality of wanting to win, wanting to be number one. That's the same mentality that the district has. So it's not that it's stressing. It's not that it's stressful because it's not. It's just the the want and the will to want to be number one in everything is what's stressful. Not wanting to be subpar is uh, what's stressful. I think in management, management isn't hard at all. Because management management is only a position. It's a position, and you're just telling people, that's it, that's management. But wanting to be great and wanting to be good at it is what's stressful. Wanting to uh, have an impact on people's uh, lives day to day, a good impact is what's stressful because it's hard to do that sometimes because you have to be firm, but then you want to kind of fall back and have fun. You know, you want people to enjoy where they work. You want people to want to come to work. Um, so that's, that's the stress level. Um, what did, what did I tell him? I told him, I said, 
long hours, new processes wear on a body and mind. Dealing with a bunch of different personalities on a daily, on a daily basis can also be draining. So yeah, man, you deal with so many personalities. Like I said, if you're a great manager, you step outside your comfort zone, outside your realm. So I might be over this one quarter of the store, but I walk the whole store all day, every day. So I'm touching bases with a lot of different personalities. You know, one person might have a bad day and I have to kind of not, not be okay with it per se, but have to kind of look at that and then manage differently, manage accordingly rather to that person. Somebody else might just be not having a bad day, but they've been not working for seven days straight. Now I got to be a little firm with that person. Somebody else might be working super hard and then they mad because they appears aren't working super hard, but I have to also be fair and get other sides of the story for it before I can just agree with that associate. And there's so much that's, that's going on all in this one time span because these ain't even my people, per se. You know? So that's that's another stress. It's just different personalities you're dealing with every day. And you have to start to learn those personalities and learn those behaviors. Um, and then also picking and choosing uh, when and how to deal with certain people. Uh, the long hours. So uh, if I go in at 5 in the morning, I probably leave until about 5, 536 anyway. If I go in at 7, I probably leave about 6, 6, 37, 8 o'clock. If I'm closing, well, bye, bye. Because of design, I have to leave by a certain time. But in all actuality, if it feels up to me, I would stay a little later. And like I said, that's just me. That's just me. I can't speak for other people. Uh, somebody else that's doing the same position might tell you, oh, I get on time. And every store is different. Every uh, every store has a different customer base, customer-centric, uh, and, and a customer count, and also a customer uh, demographic. Their demographic customers are different, too. So all that matters as well. Uh, what's the next question? What, if anything, do you dislike the job? Oh, do you dislike about the job? I put, I love the job. I dislike that retail has completely changed since COVID. That's the only thing about being in management right now. I think, so I could sit here and say I worked in my company since 2014, which would be, which would make nine years in this coming April, right? Technically speaking, I could say that. So I worked at this company for, for nine years, but in reality, I've only worked at this company for three years because when COVID came, that changed retail completely. Uh, retail is not what it once was. It's moving faster now. It's a different ball game. It changed the world. So this is a whole new company. The company I came into when I was 2014 is not the company that's 2023 right now, which granted, you always want to grow, blossom, and expand You know your business, but COVID made things change and that's the only thing I probably you know dislike about the job right now is that because of COVID, we're continuously changing things because it it keeps leaving but coming back. You know, I, we we've got to deal with it now per se, like for putting a handle on it. But now it's a whole new society we're living. In. This is a new society. This is a new America. You know how they got up? Well, I ain't gonna get biblical. I don't want to get into all that. You, know, you can do that. What do you like best about your job? I told him having an impact on people who want to grow. Um, I ain't gonna lie, the money is cool too. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna say a lot to you, right? The money is is definitely cool. The more I like I do like that we get the bonuses. The bonus time I like the most. Um I haven't really gotten a bonus I really can say, Oh, I love yet, but money is money, right? Uh so I do like that aspect. I like I like the fact that in real life, it mirrors in real life because in real life I like to be in charge. I like to take control. I like to be the one that's uh solving a problem. I like to be the one that's that you're going to call on when you have an issue. I, I like to be one looked at. So I will post something other day. I posted this, uh, or I, re-shared, I shared this post, and it says something about uh, Mr. Make It Happen. That's what I like to be looked at as. I like people look at me and say, I can call him and not worry about the situation. In management, that's what manager is really, right? So in management, somebody should be able to talk, call me and feel like he's going to have it under control. But of course, it don't always go that way, right? But that's how it should be, and I feel like that's that's my no, that's what I like most about the job. I like the fact that it mirrors me in real life now. But also, I feel like the job has also shaped me in real life. So I learned so much stuff on the job that I end up conforming in real life because who I am now is not who I was a couple years ago. Even being in management a couple years ago, I was not the same person. I knew I was in charge. I knew I made the most money out there. But as far as like. Like stepping into that role, I, w- I just didn't do it. And then once I started to do it and I started to do it outside of life, 
and I realized that, you know, it was for my best interest and my best benefit to do those things. Yeah, man, I thought I thought it was dope. I continue to do that and I do it now. Um what are the critical differences between average managers and top performance managers? Oh my God. So I told him I put this, I said, the why behind what you do, whether it be money, impact, leadership, wanting to grow, the why is very critical behind why you are in management. When I say that, I mean this. Because the question was, uh, the differences between average managers and top performance managers. So a top performance manager, for one, he wants to be number one, right? He wants to, not just the number one manager, he wants to be the go-to guy that to make it happen. He wants to be the person you call on when you have an issue. He wants to be the person that, he wants to be the face of the building. He wants to run the building, run the store, run the, run the business. And he also wants to train, develop those people up under him to do the same. He wants the best for everybody. He wants for the people, or she wants for the people that want to grow, to grow. An average manager, I mean, the bare minimum, you know. Because not, nothing, doing the bare minimum is, is still doing, right? But it's the bare minimum. So you're not only a top performer, you're just an average manager. Which, in like I said, retail has changed. So in today's climate, finding an average manager might not be that bad. <laughs> to, to be honest with you, it might be a good thing, but... You know, actuality, yeah, uh, a top of home manager. I don't know if I would consider, I mean, I'm not into, like, the rankings like that, you know, but I would say top of home manager are heavily relied on, uh, heavily overly used, usually under underpaid. But that's why I said the why behind what you're doing it for, it, it, it determines, you know, it, it really plays a fact. If you're doing it for money, you're probably not going to be a top form manager. If you're doing management for money, you will probably not be a top performing manager because if I make $75,000 a year and you make $75,000 a year, but I ain't doing nothing and I do it for the money, I come in money and I come manage making 75 k a year, I'm going to do what you do. If you ain't doing nothing, I'm going to do nothing, right? So if I'm doing it for the money and I'm making good money, I'm okay where I'm at. I, I, I'm, what's the, I'm complacent. I'm good. I'm here. I ain't got to do all that stuff, but a top perform manager wants to always excel gets you know get better and better at what he's doing learn more and more learn more and more grow more and more people train more and more people develop more and more people uh, obtain more and more knowledge give out more and more knowledge uh just be better at certain areas and just continue to get better that's what a uh, top performer manager wants. you want to you want to outperform other people um you want to get raises you want to move up in a company you want to you want to get promoted so you don't want to stay stagnant in that one spot the whole time. So that's also a reason why, a difference. But I think it's sometimes it's, it's how you are in real life. So if you look at a regular uh, average manager and a top form manager, I think, t- in my opinion, mind you, this is my opinion, one of the main uh, ingredients that that dif- that differentiate a regular manager or average manager and a top form manager is that leadership aspect. So I feel like this. I feel like you could be in management and not not be great in leadership, but you could also be great in leadership and not be in management. But I feel like to be a top performing manager, you got to have both. You got to have leadership and management. Management is just this. Okay, look, guys, uh, they saying we have, you know, 500 hours, so I'm going to have to send you eight home. Y'all work. That should be $500. We're good to go. I know what you got to do. Go ahead and do it. I'm going to, you know, talk to y'all later. That's 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 a that's an average manager. He made sure payroll was straight, you know. Um, he told him what to do. He said, "I'll come back checking y'all later," and you know that's that. You know that's that's really what can you what more can you ask for? He, he's doing he did the bare minimum, but then you have a leader, right? So you say, "Hey, look, y'all, uh, I'm cutting y'all hours this, this and third. Everybody, oh man, da, da, da. we only have four hundred hours, but we're gonna cut. This is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna cut, and where I'm cutting that, I'm gonna come help." Y'all still join the groups. You going to do that. You going to do that. You going to do that. I'm walk with you. I'm walk with you. I'm walk with you. Take five people, five people, five people. Make a team, make a team. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to go around and help each person, and we're going to keep going around that way. And then once you're done, y'all go help the next person, da, da, da. And that's more detailed, you know. Um, getting He getting in down there with them, or she getting in down there with them. Uh, making, uh, making, like, detailed plans. You walking with people to show them what need to be done. It's just the leadership aspect. And now they feel more comfortable because you out there with them showing and telling them how you want it done versus my saying, you know what you got to do? I'm taking your help. Still get it done. 
I'll come back in five hours versus somebody saying, yo, I'm taking your help, but I got a plan. Y'all do this. Y'all do that. Y'all do that. Breaking the groups. Once you're done, help them. Once you're done, help them. I'm going to come walk around, da, da, da. Those are two different managers, you know? So uh, when you ask about an average manager and a top form manager, a top form man, a top performer manager is going to not only make it happen, but um, he or she is going to make it happen seamlessly almost. Like it's not going to be no change. Even though there's big changes happening, you won't really feel it because they'll have a plan in place to make up for anything they took out of whatever y'all was doing. But an uh, average manager is going to say, hey, look, man, I'm cutting – 400 hours because we up over. Y'all still got to get it done. I'm going to the office. <laughs> that's, just, that's the nature of the business. So leadership and, and, and management, uh, whereas they go hand in hand, um, you can also, you can definitely just be uh, in leadership and not be a manager. Because how many times have you seen where you have a manager or let's say this. Yeah, you got a manager and there's somebody up under him who is really running the show. That's the leader. That's not. The, that's the leader. The manager. They just. He happened to be in a role. He's in a role where you can't disrespect him. He's just making a lot of money and maybe just pointing. You know, do this, do that. I'm not dissing him. That's the manager. Cool. But then you got a leader on the floor who is, you know, doing, uh, leading by example, uh, touching, uh, making, making uh, things happen, and also being uh, charismatic. Still looking out for the people. Um, making plays, making plans, you know what I'm saying, putting things in motion for someone to still be comfortable at work and feel like, damn, you know, certain things are attainable. I think the th- the another difference in between a good manager and a, and a top performing manager is people will look at a, a manager, I mean, an average manager or whatever, and realize, oh, nah, I could never do that. I, I ain't being in that position. No, I ain't doing that. But a top performing manager will make it look so effort- effortlessly that, I remember, a top performing, oh damn! A top performing manager will make it look so effortlessly that you got no choice but to respect it. So, um, I'm almost finished, y'all. The last question, I think seven says, uh, nope, no. Nope. Think about the skills and knowledge that you need to be effective in your job. What are they, and how did you acquire them? So I put down courage, knowledge, fairness, and reliability. And you require these by making mistakes. Make mistakes, being available, learning from those under and over you, understanding you don't know it all, and being a team player. So we got a thing where I work, it's called core values, and you want to just focus on those core values. So you know you want to be courageous. You want to um, deliver results. You want to focus on customers because we're a customer, uh, you know, basics, a center store. And you want to, uh, my favorite one, you know, you want to, uh, uh, damn, I forgot. I just don't tip my tongue just now, too. So you got liberal results, focus on customers. Uh, look at me messing up. Liberal results, focus on customers, be courageous, continue learning. Yeah, you want to continue learning. And that's my main thing, continue learning. Big, it's five of them, but I only listen to four. But continue learning is my favorite one because I feel like you, you, you can never know too much, right? Uh, and also people under you can, can, can learn new things and people over you can as well so just because you in management and you're over somebody don't mean you can't learn from the person under you i learn by curiously through a lot of people that's under me sometimes um silently sometimes too but also hey this is how it go oh we're okay cool thanks for showing me blah 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 and that's that's how you acquire a lot of things it's okay um part of being courageous is, is, is knowing when you're wrong and being okay with it and saying, oh, thanks for showing me, you know, that's, that's courageous, because that also, what that does is, it gives that associate under you, the, the, the feeling of, okay, I could, I could, I could be something, you know, I know more, I know something he doesn't know, I know something she doesn't know, so it helps out a lot, too, um, last one, it says, what has been your biggest mistake thus far, could you have avoided them, I put, my biggest mistakes were all avoidable, All it required was me paying attention. Once I started to move at an effective and efficient pace, I've been great. And, um, yeah, man, my biggest mistakes, I think just really um, moving too fast for one and not wanting to conform with the new the new ways the company was going. You know, once you were a company for so long, you used to do it in one way, you you don't want to conform to these new ways. Once you start to do that, um, 
you start to see that you know you you gotta you gotta you gotta be on board with things. That's just the main the main thing, man. You gotta be on board with things. Like it's like in a team. A team if you if you supposed to play defense and you out there not playing defense, your team your team your team your team suffers. And I think that once I and then also stepping into role. I think my biggest mistake was being hesitant into stepping into a role. Like I was hesitant to step into that role that I was that was just there for me. Like, yo, you should be in charge. You should be this. And I was hesitant. I would be quiet sometimes. I wouldn't say things. And once I started to step into that role and be more vocal and kind of, uh, you know, impose my will, put my foot down and things of that nature, I realized that good things started happening for me. And it's like, dang, I could have been doing this. And it always was there for me. It just I just didn't do it. So um, that's what, that's, 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 that's my, I made a lot of mistakes. Don't get me wrong. I made a lot more than those. You know what I'm saying? But or thinking that things is easy. Nothing is easy. Even an easy day. I realize now that if I see an easy day, I make it hard for myself somehow, somewhere because if this is an easy day and I take it, the next time I have a hard day, it's going to be super hard. I'm going to keep thinking like, damn, when I had that easy day, I should have had to just, you know, put some on my plate. And in management, it's no easy days. You know what I'm saying? It's, every day should be challenging. If it's not challenging, then either you ain't doing your job or uh, something's wrong. So, that's 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 the spill of that. But I wanted to give that to y'all because I thought it was dope. Uh, I'll probably send it to this person too so he can see it and just you know have more of a visual with it. I hope that uh, I didn't bore you guys too much with the talking. You know, uh, I wanted to make up for last episode, so I wanted to go a little longer. We almost had an hour, I think, or something like that. So um, yeah, man, uh, much respect to y'all. If y'all got topics and stuff you want me to touch on, don't be afraid to put in the comments or don't be afraid to message me and let me know. I will definitely work on. Uh, I'll talk about any any topic. I'm trying to shy away from the gender wars, but if it's a gender conversation that needs to be had or just, I'm trying to stay, I ain't gonna lie, I'm trying to stay from that. I ain't really trying to do that. But um, yeah, man, this is the episode, man. Man, I should sell this book, man. One day it's gonna work some money. This book, mark my words, man, this book one day probably gonna work some money. If you're in this book, and some of y'all are, because some of y'all, some of y'all are. Some of y'all are in this book. It's on my friends list. and Because when I first started, all I did was people I knew. My friends. If you're in this book, if I first, if I first started a podcast and, and, and you, did a, you did an episode with me, my first like 50 some episodes or 100 episodes, you probably in this book. Book on work, worth money them one day. One day, it's going to worth something. One Master Podcast, we out. <laughs>